Hey, what's up guys? Finally get to do the review on the Browse Blade Silent Soldier. It is awesome and I have probably the most use in this knife than I've had with, uh, I don't know about any knife, but it's been a while since I really used a knife this much. And not only that, um, it's been hanging on my neck from the first day I got it. I've carried it every single day, every single place I've ever gone. I've even carried it around the house on some occasions. And in fact, it's still on my neck right now. So let me take it off and uh, bring it in view here. So here it is. Here's the specific one that I've been using forever. All right, the one in the background here, you say is a first generation. All right, slightly different, obviously different blade shapes as well, but this was the, the first design and I will compare them briefly. I'll compare now. I also had a third one which was the new, newer generation, but a different uh, blade style, and that one had gone to uh, Sask Tactical, and he did a little unboxing video, which I just saw, so uh, that was uh, a prize for a contest. Um, I didn't need both to review it, it's just a different blade shape. This uh, Warncliffe style um, shape is what I wanted for this neck knife, so that's what I stuck with, and I could not be happier. It is just awesome. So first off, um, just in a quick comparison uh, between the newer generation and the older one, Obviously there are some changes which I believe briefly went over when I unboxed these knives, but the biggest thing uh, that's noticeable is the extended uh, finger, well, the extended guard on the finger which also creates a larger finger choil. You can see the uh, more curvature here as opposed to the original one which is just basically a half moon. All right, And this serves really um, two purposes. First of all, I find that the retention in the sheath is even better with the newer one. You see on the bottom here, that extended piece goes past where it pinches down. Okay, this is what gives you the retention in the sheath. All right, so you see right there, it kind of fits fine. It's loose. It would fall out if I let go of it. But then the, the sheath part, of the kydex, gets uh, skinnier, so it has to push past that and then obviously pops into its position. The retention on the sheath is perfect. It's perfect, and it's completely silent. And silent soldier, I guess, but it's beautiful. I love it, um, but obviously the, the more important concern people had was with uh, your finger being so close to this blade. And the original one, with no, no extension here, in a, a standard grip, your, your skin's close to that sharp edge and it, it concerns some people in use if you were to thrust, particularly a Tanto version of this, you thrust into something, it's going to be easy for your finger to slip right over and uh, obviously cut yourself pretty good. Even, you know, using it in a utility uh, fashion, you might slip up a little bit. Not a huge deal, but certainly a concern, which people pointed out. And what I like about um, Jason Browse is that he listens to everyone, like uh, all good knife makers do. There's plenty of guys out there who, uh, who listen to what we want. They want to sell their product. They want to make awesome knives. And to do that, they have to interact with you and me. If we don't want something, they'll get rid of it. If we want something, they'll add it. That's just how it works, and it's great business. Um, so yeah, just with the uh, the slight change. Oh, something else I want to show you is the uh, jimping on the top has changed. The original version, just uh, lines coming across. It's uh, well, this one's coated, so it's not completely fair to compare the two because the coating will take away a little bit from the grip. But um, it's it's okay. It's not bad. It's not awesome. Um, but the newer style with this line that goes through the middle, it creates a lot more surface area. All right, and a lot more fine corners on every single line that goes across. By putting a cross line in here, you're creating four more points individually. Let me get really close and use this other knife to point to see what I'm explain what I'm talking about here. All right, if you just had two lines across, your points are on the outside here. Here's a corner. Here's a corner. But when you put a line in the middle here, you created a corner there. Let me get really close. Corner there. Corner there. One there and one there for every single passing. So when you're hand when you're handling it, it really does. You can tell the difference between the two, even though this one is coated. Like I said, it takes away from that a little bit. But just a small uh, touch, which is a really nice touch. Also, you notice between the two here. Obviously, we have some indentations here, which uh, originally I was under the impression that like you know it's for pinching the front for maybe more acute work and stuff like that. Um, I, I don't find it aesthetically. It's cool. I like the way it looks, but um, it doesn't serve much of a purpose there. In fact, I think it takes away a little bit from the pinch because um, you get less grip because there's literally less steel. So with this one, if I were to pinch the top, I feel like I have a little bit more control with this. It's not a big deal. It doesn't take away from the knife much, but it looks cool. I really like the looks of it.
but that was obviously added as well. So there's a little comparison between the two. Did use this for a little bit. Um, I liked it a lot, but quickly transitioned to this one, which I liked even more, basically just because of the blade style. So um, you'll notice that, you know, obviously I uh, been carrying this as a neck knife, but they do come with the pocket clip, which works fantastically. I only carry it two days as a, um, like a belt knife. And um, I went right back to having it as a neck knife. I think it's a fantastic neck knife. So, you know, if I want something on my belt, I'll pick something else. But you do have the option, which I think is fantastic. It's great. It's great to have options. You may never need it. Put it in a drawer, save it. Who knows when you go to sell it, you know, sell it with the knife. But, all right, so before we really get into the knife, I want to uh, show you the swag that I have in the background here because I want to get it out of the way so we can focus on the knife. But I do want to show you that I love my knife swag. Knife stickers, gun stickers, patches, gear, shirts, whatever. I love it. I'm a huge fan of knives and guns and gear, and uh, I like to show it off. So these, uh, usually when I get stickers and stuff, they go on my uh, gun locker, uh, which is separate, which I keep like accessory stuff in, um, holsters, ammo, stuff like that. But besides the, uh, the stickers and decals, I like, uh, I got two of these. These are like the micro uh, fiber cloths. And they're both awesome. I mean, they work really good from cleaning my phone off, which I use it mostly for, to wiping down your blades if you happen to have like a nice polished finish. So besides that, the old uh, old versions used to come just in a plastic bag, no frills. Now you get uh, like a box, and you get a decal, and you get a card with uh, Jason's information on it, which here it is. You can see it, so you wanna get in touch with them. And uh, it's just awesome, it's very cool. And I also have a shirt which you guys have seen me wearing before. I'm sure you've seen me wear it again. So now, on to the, the knife. All right, as I mentioned before, I've been carrying this as a neck knife. It works beautifully. It's a thicker gauge ball and chain. It's not like the little chintzy one. Um, it's actually really, it's substantial and sturdy and I like it a lot. I, I actually like it uncoated. There's a, a black one I've used before and I don't like the coated chains because just like the knife, it's, it's coated, it's not like anodized or anything. So it, they tend to be like a little stiffer and instead of being loose and conforming to a shape, they kind of just like hold their shape and it's just a little, I don't know, it just feels cheap and it's a little uncomfortable, I guess. But um, besides that, sheath works out perfectly. Uh, as I mentioned before already, the retention of this is just beautiful. Very solid, audible click. I know when the knife is in, it's easy to, uh, to pull out because of the design, you have the hole. So you actually get from the sheath a full grip on the knife, okay? You can just pull it out. What I tend to do with any kind of sheath is I'll push my thumb on the edge, okay? So it's not this big, like, you know, jerky motion because then when it, when it does release, you end up swinging your arm. So it's much easier to use a finger like your thumb and to just push the sheath away from the knife. So it's a calm <laughs> release of the knife. So sheath is perfect. I really, I have no critiques at all. It's, it's beautiful. There is a different style sheath, um, which I, I like this one or that one more than the other style um, that uh, SAS Tactical got in the, uh, the contest. It's the same version of knife, but it's a different sheath style. And there's a little bit of play in that one. I like this one much, much better. I'm not sure which ones are coming from the, with the current production, but. Okay, so my battery died and I'm back. <laughs> Finally get to talk about the knife now. Um, I love this knife. I think it's not in question as to how I feel about it. I think it's fantastic. It's a really, really awesome design. It's very versatile. Um, this is one solid piece of D2 steel. I think the heat treat is fantastic. It came razor sharp. It was uh, easily slicing paper and um, still going through uh, some phone book paper uh, fairly cleanly, which I really liked. Uh, I did sharpen this twice uh, since I've been using it, but I've been putting some heavy, heavy use on this thing, so it's to be expected. Um, this specific stone wash finish, I've gotten this wet, didn't maintain it like I would some of my carbon steel blades and my other D2 or, or tool steel blades, and I've had no issues whatsoever with rust. So being a tool steel and being a little bit more prone to rust than uh, some of the stainless steels out there, this one in this specific finish has not been an issue whatsoever. So that's good news. Some people get D2 and they get all kinds of um, you know surface rust issues. This one didn't have that issue at all. Uh, 4.5 inches overall on length here. Uh, our cutting edge is 2.5 inches. Just a uh, flat ground on both sides, traditional uh, V grind, all right? Very, very simple, very easy to maintain, literally being straight. It's uh, very easy to use on a stone if you were to hand sharpen this. So you don't need any kind of crazy system or anything to maintain your edge. Um, the weight on this is 2.2 ounces, just a knife, or 
uh, with the sheath is 3.2 ounces. So again, having this as a neck knife, I have not found this to be fatiguing or anything. I don't have a sore neck from a lot of weight hanging. It's, it's there for me all the time. It's a pretty ideal um, blade style and everything. You know, the overall, the shape, the weight, how I use it, it's been great. I, I mean, I've, I've, I'm, you guys know I'm a huge fan of neck knives to begin with, and there's a lot of different designs out there. Um, another one I like is the CRKT Minimalist and the CRKT Spew, both of those fantastic uh, production neck knives, uh, and both of those even lighter than this. This one seems to be a little bit more substantial, a little bit more um, uh, sturdy, maybe more hard use, if you will, uh, which I really like, particularly in this design. There's a lot of different ways you can grip this knife, Having the finger troll here, uh, the extended finger troll, specifically on the newer generations, even gives you a better grip. Like I said before, you don't have much of an issue uh, riding forward because of that extension, as you do with the original one, where if you were to thrust into something, to stab, uh, even in a uh, reverse grip, you have a, a slight chance for your finger to cross over that section. It's just too close for comfort. I never had any issues with the, the short amount of time I had on this blade. But uh, with this one, it just it feels much more secure. But a couple ways uh, you can grip this, put your pointer finger. This is the most natural way, and this is how I use it every single time, particularly because it's how I'm also retrieving the knife from the neck sheath, okay? So it's hanging on my neck. I literally just reach up with my finger through the first hole and then pull it out. So naturally, how I want to grip it is to put my middle finger in the choil, my pinky and a ring finger wrap around, and my thumb just naturally rests on the spine. Okay, I do my cutting chores. You can just use this in a simple pinch grip. Uh, what I find is that when I do pinch this, I tend to um, lock my ring finger up into that finger troll as well. So it gives me a little bit more uh, sturdiness when I'm cutting. Although this is kind of rare. Generally speaking, I'll just grab it like this. Besides this, you can use it in reverse grip. Okay, like uh, kind of like a karambit. You put your pinky through the hole and your ring finger tucks into that uh, extended choil. And it's very, very secure in your hand, very comfortable. Also, in a defensive situation, you can put your middle finger through the hole, all right, and your ring finger underneath here, and use this in a punch style grip, okay, which would be very devastating in a defensive situation. Um, one of the things I like about any type of knife with a hole in it, particularly around where the, the pivot would be in, say, a folding uh, design, is that I can take, I can leave the knife while I'm using it, I can spin it around, all right, and have my hand free. To grip and use as a hand okay so if I'm doing some kind of utility work I don't want to necessarily put the knife back in the sheath I'm going to use it again but I can't really I mean you have access to uh, all five of your fingers this way as well but this you know is still a little bit in the way you know it's not a huge deal but let's say I'm cutting something I need to I need to grip something you can reach over and grip that way or well even keep my finger in here I can just swing this around and then uh, have more access to my full hand for, for grabbing stuff and using my hand so that's something I really like as well. Uh, something to be noted here, as far as these finger hole sizes, I wear a 13 size ring now. That's the fattest part of my finger, my pointer finger. All right, more, more times than not when you're using this knife, it's not gonna be all the way down here, okay? It's gonna be around uh, your, your second knuckle, okay? This is just naturally how you wanna grab the knife. There's plenty of wiggle room here. But just for reference out there, if you are a bigger dude and you have real fat fingers or real you know big hands, um, this fits perfectly and even has room to, uh, to easily spin around a 13 size finger. Okay, just for reference here. So if you do have like mass, I don't know, you wear like a 16 ring or something or a 17 ring, um, you're not gonna be able to get the, your finger completely through it, but it's not really necessary. Perhaps more so in a uh, reverse grip. Just referencing this, but obviously your pinky is not the same as your pointer finger. But I wanna reference the size of that hole in a real time thing. So if you happen to know your, your ring finger size, which you can find out online, a 13 is about as big as this hole is. So you, you can understand if you're a bigger guy, if it's gonna work for you in that sense. Um, overall, it's a fantastic knife. It works really well. The D2 holds up really great. You have a, a very adequate edge on there, even surpassing adequate. It's definitely a, uh, a superior uh, blade in pretty much every way. The only critiques I have on it is to continue this um, spine jimping all the way down. If you are someone who appreciates that, uh, naturally your thumb is not there. You have to kind of reach for it, which is a little uncomfortable or, or kind of an awkward position. Um, other than that, I like it. I really like it. Um, different knives for different reasons. Is this the be best, excuse me, uh, knife neck? <laughs> is this the Beck knife neck? Mwah. 
Huh. All right, let's try that again. Is this the best neck knife in the world? Who knows? I don't know. I could tell you that it works. It works great. I have other neck knives that I use as well. I love them too for different reasons. There's no perfect folder. There's no perfect fixed blade and there's no perfect uh, small fixed blade like this or in this case a neck knife. But I can tell you it works in every single uh, situation that I put it in thus far and I'm very, very happy with it. It is a custom knife. And for a custom knife, it's extremely affordable. If you get these, I'm gonna put links to both Jason's website where he charges $89 for these, which I think is a steal. First of all, custom knife, period, 89 bucks, are you kidding me? That's an awesome, awesome price. But I'm also gonna post um, Blade HQ's website because I know they're one of the many dealers that uh, carries uh, Jason's work. And uh, they're even cheaper, they're in the 70s. So, you know, going through a dealer, you might get a better deal. In this case, Blade HQ is a better deal than going direct. But of course, going direct, you do have more options. Um, I'll give you links to both those websites, and there's a, a you know a bunch of different dealers out there. I'm just using Blade HQ as an example because they're a great company, and you know I've used them personally in the past as well. But uh, that's it. I mean, it, it's a great knife. If you like the way it looks, I can tell you it's going to function very well for you, and you don't have to worry about your. Some people were concerned about the finger winding up and stuff. The new gens with this uh, extension is uh, it's a perfect fix for that. So if it's aesthetically pleasing, you look at it and say, that's cool, and you really wanna get into like a custom uh, small fixed blade like this, you can't beat it. It's really, really good. All right, so as far as the different uh, blade styles and stuff, that's up to personal preference. But overall, it's a fantastic knife, and it's a knife that I will continue to EDC for a long time. And the only reason I would ever change this out and not carry this is because either I wanna do a different setup or I want to try a different neck knife. But other than that, it's, uh, it's definitely going to be a user for, of mine for a very, very long time. So Jason's work is top notch and he has some pretty cool, interesting designs and plenty of cool stuff to come up in the future. I don't have a bunch of information, but I can tell you if you want the custom version, 90 bucks direct from Jason or slightly less from other places. However, there will be a production version of this coming out in the future, which you will see and eventually I will get. I think it's going to be around the $30 range. So if you like this design and you don't want to fork over the 80 or 90 bucks, um, just hang on and eventually you have a cheaper option. Of course, they'll have different steel and that such. It won't be made by Jason, but we'll talk more about that in the future when there's more information on it. But for now, I can tell you this is this is really, really good. And if you're on the fence about it, fall over to the, uh, the side where you're gonna buy it because you're not gonna regret it. It's a great knife. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you soon. Take care.